Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sunmin Miller. All right, friends, I'm going to give the talk here tonight um, about the celebrity dating game. Um, so, depending on your uh, age or what country you're from, Let's see. Yeah, I guess it's all all the the U.S. tonight. Uh, I might that might sound familiar from the uh, old game show from the, the I think it started in the '60s, went up through the '80s. Uh, the old dating show uh, the, the, called the Dating Game, um, and uh, jo- and so there's this new celebrity version of it. Joe and I uh, watched lately, and uh, uh, just you know obsessed with it. It's um it's like um uh, it, it's performance art is what it is. It's really astounding. Um, all right, so you just bear with me. The, the story requires a lot of detail. So just hang in there. I'm going to give you all the detail and just enjoy the story. Um, uh, all right. So in case you're not familiar with the original, uh, you would have, um, there's the host and then there'd be the one, uh, lucky person, hopefully who, uh, who gets the, um, who gets to pick the person for a date. And that person is separated by a wall from three contestants. Now, the old version of the show was entirely heterosexual. And so you'd have like one man and then three female contestants or a woman and three male contestants. And the um, the main person, the bachelor, bachelorette, whatever, would uh, ask the contestants and would ask questions and would listen to their voices, try to get a sense of who he or she wanted to. Uh, have on a date but back then like in the old show I mean we're not talking about going on a date they would be like here you get a week's vacation to Hawaii you know you know you get your flight paid for the hotel this is a big deal and frankly that like frightens me like wait you're gonna send me off with this stranger oh and in the 70s one of the one of the guys killed the woman that I mean I'm totally against that that is bad um yeah this I think that and the folks my understanding is the folks running the show they didn't know about that for a long time that it had happened because it's just like just send them off they pay the bill and that's it but yeah uh, so not not a safe safe thing uh so anyway it was and it was very uncomfortable and weird show back then but now there's the celebrity dating where a celebrity comes out and gets to pick uh, uh from three non-celebrities and it's no longer a heterosexual show uh it, you know it's 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 anything um uh which is a, a real nice change um and you know, I wonder, like, well, why are this, these celebrities doing this? And, you know, and most of them seem like really nice people, um, very intelligent, really interesting. That, you know, if you're single, it'd be like, yeah, this would be whether the person's celebrity or not. It seems like, you know, they'd be a good person to go on a date with. Uh, some of them, yeah, not so much, but, but most of them seem all right. And I wonder, like, why are they doing Do they really need this? And first thought, like, oh, it's a, it's a, a charity thing, right? They're ra- but there's no mention of raising money. There's no money involved except, I guess, paying for their, their date. Which I also assume now is highly controlled, right? You're not like sending off this uh, celebrity with this, um, you know, random person. It's probably like it's you know in a controlled space, no phone numbers exchanged, guards all around, and uh, signing uh, contracts that you will not touch each other. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's uh, wonderful, um, very romant- romantic. Um, but, but then I guess oh, they're in on it. They know it's performance art and they want to be part of this extraordinary artistic event that's going on. It's the only explanation I'd, I've got for this. Um, okay, but anyway, again, bear with me, lots of, lots of detail here. So I got to set this up for you. So there's, there's the main host is, is um, Zoe Deschanel, who might not be, she's an actress, might not be familiar with her. She, uh, she was in um, the great Christmas movie, Elf. She was the, one of the, the two main characters in there um, with the, the wonderful singer. And uh, um, what was it called? Uh, the Happening. A uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Um, uh, M Night Shyamalan made. That's a movie he made. I, I don't know what I haven't seen her in very much, but I, I get the impression she's been in, in lots of things and is quite famous. Uh, but here's and she's great. Uh, she has this inc- wicked sense of humor, um, and she does like you, you know you, if you've seen the old show, you can met like or there any sort of like 60s show you can imagine when the music comes on to go to the commercial break there's this like a little bit of dancing and she does 
the original show didn't actually have that, but she does this dance that these goofy little things that just evoke the time period brilliantly of like the, the, the 60s origins of the show. So she's uh, she's just at I mean she's an actress right I mean she knows uh, I mean she's she's performing uh, but she's just an exquisite host she, and her sense of humor is is excellent but here's who the other host is it's Michael Bolton yes that Michael Bolton for those I don't know maybe you don't all know but he like the the great American pop singer known for his love ballads um, what um, how can we be lovers if we can't be friends um, when a man loves a woman. So like, yes, that Michael Bolton. And he also, he's amazing. He, he's the best thing on the show. Again, his sense of humor is incredible. It's this, this is dry humor. And you say these little things, again, it, you, you know, yeah, this is, has to be performance art. It's, he's just mind blowing on the show. I love him. Uh, but here's his actual role. He, um, so part of the game is the contestants guess who the celebrity is, or they try to. Um, I would just, boy, I'd fail miserably. Some of them, they're like, instantly, they hear the voice and they know it. But anyway, to, to help them out, he takes, I guess it's not necessarily his songs, but like some love song, and he changes up the lyrics to give clues, like basically makes it about the person. But he sings it to the celebrity. Imagine Michael Bolton singing you a love song from like 10 feet away. Like that would be an overwhelming experience. And now imagine being one of those three contestants and you're like, wait a minute, Michael Bolton is just singing this guy love songs and I'm some, somehow supposed to look good after that. And people make jokes all the time. They're like, can I take Michael Bolton on a date? Um, yeah, I mean, again, if you're single, Michael Bolton singing love songs to you, you know, that's the, that'd be a pretty awesome experience. Um, so anyway, there's part of what's great about the, um, about the show. Um, yeah, sorry, bear, a lot of detail here, bear with me. Um, now, the, the show is, like the original, it gets really uncomfortable sometimes. So like Michael Bolton, Zoe Deschanel, the celebrity, I think they're all in on it. They know it's performance art and it's brilliant. I don't think the contestants get it though. I think they, they think they're doing this for real. And it gets real uncomfortable, like the original show. But unlike the original show, I mean, these, at least from what I remember of what little I saw of it, in like the, I don't know, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, um, man, they, the things that they will say, like some people, I think they want to be celebrities is the thing. Man, some, they're like it, trying to entice the person, like they want to win, right? So they're like enticing the person, basically just coming right out, you know, open offers of sex. Um, and and like in public, shocking. Um, but then others, it's like these, they're talking like they're getting married, which is also weird. And in public, and, but I guess these folks said no shame. I guess I shouldn't be embarrassed by it. Like some Joe, one of the pleasures Joe gets in watching this with me is I will bury my head in a pillow when people get too embarrassing. But I guess I shouldn't get embarrassed because these people clearly have no shame about it. So that's my problem, not theirs. They're enjoying themselves. They're, they're getting to be celebrities for a half hour. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, it, it gets real uncomfortable. Um, okay, but... You know, somebody asks them all these questions and here's a voice and, and eventually hits on on somebody and we enjoy trying to guess who they're gonna um, who they're gonna pick pardon me um, all right so then uh, the, the celebrity picks picks somebody and uh, of course the other two are very disappointed although with some of those there's a few celebrities that I think people probably like Phew, got out of that one um, and then Zoe will uh, then in um, we'll uh, we'll introduce the two people who lost, and we'll you know just say what they what they do. You know they're usually very successful uh, people. You know with their own businesses and and so forth, or you know artists or whatever. And then invites them out, and they go and shake the hands or hug the the uh, celebrity, get to meet the person. And half the time, they're like, who is this person I'm looking at? Because they haven't introduced him yet. Um, and then uh, and then the stand there that brings out the other one, and the two losers are, are standing there. And then Zoe, she always does the um, uh, the same thing. Says something like, "Well, you didn't um, you didn't find true love, but go have some ice cream." And the two head off backstage. And so I'm like picturing a uh, uh, an ice cream bar backstage or something, which I think is great. Like, again, some of the celebrities there, I'm thinking, "Well, I think I'd rather have the ice cream." Um, sounds great. And so it's it's just part of the routine. She does this every single time without variation. And then after watching about. I don't know, at least half the uh, half the episodes that uh, existed at this point, the shocking thing happens. 
bring the, the two losers get introduced. And Zoe says, go have some ice cream. And they head off. And she turns back to the audience, looks at them directly and says, there is no ice cream. I was crushed. I was absolutely crushed. I mean, there was no ice cream. And the way she said it, I, I couldn't do it perfectly, but the way she said it, it was as if she was, there was such contempt in her voice as if she was saying to the audience or to me, like you contemptuous little fool, why did you ever think there was any ice cream? There was never going to be any ice cream. And so I'm like, I don't know what's real and what's not. What is happening to these people when they go backstage? Now I'm picturing they're going off to their executions or being put into a dungeon. Anything is possible except for anything good. At this point, I don't know what happens backstage. We probably never hear from them again. Uh, but it's not ice cream. It, it was just absolutely, um, just absolutely crushing. <laughs> um uh moment there um yeah oh, okay so that's a lot of detail to put you through uh, on the show okay so we'll bring this back around okay so what's the point of the story there is no point to this story 